jumping into the unknown, sailing higher. We jumped off the cliff. We're the fool, but we're flying. It's happening. It's happening. Welcome back, everyone. Artist Journal, October 7th, 2024, broadcasting from Berlin, Germany. My name's Adrian Pocabelli. Keeping it new here. It's actually not that hard. Secret weapon is coffee. The secret weapon is coffee, is what I tell many people when they ask me <laughs> how I do this three times a week. It's actually not that hard, but it, you know, you you know, the hardest part uh, is pressing record. Actually, as a matter of fact. So, with all that being said, there's another big show ahead of us. Uh, there's nothing I can do. I feel powerless against it. Uh, but so I just uh, report. Uh, what I see here of, you know, interesting significance as we see here with Haiti Rocket. An, a subtle, it took me a while, a subtle innovation. A innovation which is very uncommon. Can you see it? What is the innovation here? Now, it's not like it's never happened before. I've, I, have a, uh, I have an example that I'm going to show you where it kind of uses this, uh, what I'd call, uncommonly used innovation uh, and it's something we really don't see that often I would argue if you feel otherwise feel free to uh, leave a comment but it's really not that common let me show you and if you haven't noticed so what do we have here so Haiti rocket out of Turkey uh, and here we have what looks like to me and you tell me is we have an Amiga 1200 interface, as we see here, Amiga 1200. But what do we have? We have Windows, maybe from an Amiga 1200. We have the user interface. But then we have a completely different software, kind of like an image in an image. We have what looks like to me, and maybe I'm wrong, but what looks like to me is a glitch ROM that has been added into the mix, perhaps, perhaps, pure speculation here, you, you start to wonder, were these orange pixels done with Amiga software, or maybe that's just a function of the glitch ROM, not sure. Here, again, you seem to see glitch ROM, you know, production or product, shall we say, or art piece within a larger a different uh, software, shall we say, uh, within the Amiga, you know, uh, user interface, shall we call it, operating system. So it's kind of a, it's, so generally when we see multiple softwares being used, it's usually, I'd say 99% of the time, feel free to disagree, uh, open-minded on this, Morning coffee thoughts here. It's morning coffee with, with your host here. Uh, generally, what we see is export. Entire image is with that software. And then you go, oh, that's cool. What if I, for example, put that into you know a different software where it'll create this effect? And then entire image uh, processed, so to speak, within that new software. What's unusual, shall we say, about this is actually cutting out uh, windows, so to speak, and then putting in different softwares, almost as if these are like different little programs that have been loaded up on your Amiga 1200, but they're actually other art pieces by Haiti Rocket, interestingly. And they look like fragments, shall we say, of these other art pieces. And here we see kind of uh, classic uh, Haiti Rocket uh, language. The punk poet, uh, you know, is one way of describing him. One way I like to describe him. Don't panic, you know, classic. Uh, and here, Anti Chaos, not sure what that is. Maybe it's a series. There's Anti Chaos. Maybe that's the name of the new series. Interestingly, you know, good news on my computer freezing, and I do plan on getting a new one at some point here to save us from this. Uh, but 
Good news on the computer freezing is I noticed that the main image sticks even if I freeze. Like, so as you'll see, the main image where we see the art continues to go. It's just my camera that flickers in and out. So I guess that's good news. Uh, so anyway, so here is Haiti Rocket, edition of 13, still available for 69 Tezos. Uh, very cool red too. This red and black and then contrasting nicely. And finally on this, just from a content point of view, Pretty cool combination. On the right, you have text. On the left, maybe you have a manga figure. Maybe, you know, oh, is it nude or not? Interesting kind of little provocation here. And then, oh, and then the window's coming down, but not quite. You're not sure what's going to happen. Don't panic. Uh, so interesting, interesting, interesting as ever. Uh, and almost these other words, you know, that's the weird thing about meaning. These other words start to take on different meaning within the context of this juxtaposition here. Free memory, all of a sudden you're looking at puns here. Uh, release, you know, workbench. So anyways, Supreme, interesting title too, uh, with characteristic, uh, you know, capitals intermixed in the lowercase letters here. Classic, like a great internet artist uh, here, Haiti Rocket. Uh, as we are still in the age of the internet, I would argue. Uh, I brought up a couple of examples of where we've seen it before. LB and the side hustle. Within the Tezos blockchain, this happened. This was, I remember showing some of these on the show. This is May 2022. So this is a year and three months ago, interestingly. And here you see the side hustle, kind of a pixel artist. I don't know what happened to the side hustle. Maybe we'll look quickly at the risk of freezing my computer. But then you see Elby's work put inside these old TVs here and uh, this kind of movie theater, and perhaps, not sure if it's also LB contributing to the sculpture, probably not, uh, that's probably side hustle, but then in here, it kind of looks like LB here in these little TVs. This was a really cool series. Look at that, 500 Tezos on secondary. Some of these are cheap though. Uh, NTSC rooms, uh, 31, you know, some are still available. Uh, 15 Tezos, I need to kind of, you know, I always, you know, forget uh, to check this stuff while I'm uploading the video, and then I kind of lose my opportunity here as people zoom in. Uh, but very cool series. I have another, look at this one. Uh, I do own this one, Sesh Room. And again, you see, so it's kind of an interesting innovation, uncommonly used. It creates a very interesting contrast, doesn't it? I mean, here you see the static pixel art, shall we call it, uh, that uh, that side hustle is doing with this kind of busy, very different kind of complex uh, video art by LB that's kind of flickering, glitched out. Uh, even here, hilariously, uh, really, you know, adjusting itself to the perspective of the room. Um, and here's another one, as you see here, and an opportunity, and here's some great ballet dancers. Of course, uh, LB's Ballet Dancer, one of the great, great works of, probably my favorite work by LB. Here's one more, uh, Sammy's Bedroom. So you see here a very interesting contrast uh, within. Uh, let me bring up very quickly here. Uh, for those that haven't seen, I've brought this up before, but there's always kind of new viewers uh, and let me just see, maybe it's ballet or dancer. Here it is. Yeah, one of my favorites. How much is this going for now? Only, I was going to say only 90 Tezos. Uh, this is a gorgeous work. As you see, this, like, I mean, sometimes everything just kind of hits perfectly. This is what happens when you make a lot of work. You, it's statistical. The more work you make, the more you're going to hit. And, and just like if you never make a work, you'll never hit so to speak. So uh, just another example of you make a lot of work and then you get gorgeous things that happen like this. Daydreaming Ballet, even a great uh, title on that. How many are available? One available for 90 Tezos. Bringing it back to Haiti Rocket. So uh, again, Haiti Rocket, as I've mentioned many times before, is the artist that kind of, who when I, I, I came here because I saw a Rado work uh, that I want to get. Uh, the one with the Cosmo on the horse there. And I thought, oh, wow, here's one I can actually kind of afford. Paid way too much for it. But it was more affordable than buying a Rata on Ethereum, 
which was unaffordable in 2021. And uh, so I came on to Tezos for that reason. Also because people had been mentioning it to me. And so I got on December 2021, put a few works up. Didn't know what to think of it, but kind of came back, you know, every so often. And it was actually the work of Haiti Rocket that persuaded me to look to go deeper. And which led me down a rabbit hole, really, of, uh, of you know, incredible, uh, like, you know, for three to six months, you know, maybe three months where I was just kind of obsessed. And I was like, what is going on here? And this is why I'm very sympathetic by the way, to people who I would argue don't understand or are not familiar with is maybe a better way of putting it, the visual language in which we're dealing with. The reason why I'm sympathetic uh, for people who are not familiar with this visual language is because that's what happened to me. Like I kind of had to learn the language of the blockchain and Haiti Rocket's work, these kind of glitch ROMs that you see here, were my way in. All of a sudden I could go, hey, this is kind of cool. This is kind of like punk digital art here. This is something that kind of has that vibe, that aesthetic kind of, what I'd argue is aesthetic sophistication. That to me, I go, this kind of is, this is kind of like my scene, so to speak, uh, in terms of this is the kind of work that I could get into, right? It was Haiti Rockets work and the hilarious, the punk, like the, the humor, the digital fun. That is being had here. So, uh, so yeah. So, just another you know spectacular artist here, and this is just you know many. I think probably has over you know this is classic. Uh, just a great internet artist here, using repetition. Right, think of Dan Control and the repeating of elements. Here you have one computer. Now you repeat it. Uh, and then you put it into some other software. This is generally how the multiple software thing goes. This is probably made in some sort of pixel art software, and perhaps it's put into another software that is, you know, enables some kind of animation like this. Speculating out loud here. So Amiga 1200. Interesting. Maybe that is an Amiga 1200 computer network. So just brilliant art uh, by Haiti Rocket. So interesting as ever here. Uh, but again, the reason, again, why I'm empathetic and sympathetic with people who aren't familiar with the language is because it, it requires learning. Once you understand the language, which I think is getting increasingly uh, understood, at least within the scene, then it's not that hard. Then all of a sudden you speak the language and you get it. But it's, uh, you know, I'm someone that, you know, I was obsessed with art, always have been. Uh, and it took me a few months because there's just finally on this point, because there is so much other work that you don't know what to make of that sometimes it's, it's hard that when you're just looking at the chaos of really of the digital art on object when you have nothing to grasp onto. I finally had something to grasp onto, finally, with Haiti Rocket's work, and that opened up a whole other world by doing this. You know, for those that maybe are new, then you go, oh, what's Haiti collecting? Oh, there's the Kurt Hustle Collective. How did I discover the Kurt Hustle Collective? Oh, it was Haiti Rocket's collection. Here, look at this, that pinball guy. Look at this. I, sh I used to do this more, uh, going to other people's collections to just see what, you know, cool artists are collecting. Something I should actually go back to. It always it's good because it always brings new work into the feed here. Anyway, so uh, big shout out to Haiti Rocket, awesome, awesome artist. Uh, so let's continue. Unknown collector uh, on the state of the arts. So as we're going to see uh, shortly, unknown collector putting out a pretty cool tweet. Is it a asking? Is it a revolutionary new art movement? We'll come to that in a bit. Uh, so we're going to discuss with Unknown Collector this Wednesday. Runetune said he might have to work, so not sure if he'll be in. Uh, hopefully he can make it. If not, it'll be just you, C, and uh, your host here. And finally, uh, let's look at the uh, comments here on the last show. Thank you, everybody, for commenting. It's always uh, a delight, frankly, for people to take the time to respond to what you're putting out there. Runetune, thanks for the thoughtful response to my previous response. When I saw a problematic wealth gap, you said it screams opportunity. I love your optimism and pragmatic viewpoint. 
I think that's what draws me to your show every morning. Great points you make. Thank you. So, loving the vibes. A huge fan of positive thinking. Huge, huge fan of positive thinking. It is crucial. And uh, thank you, Runetune, for the positive vibes back here. Uh, and it really is the first thing that come that goes in my head is uh, the opportunity that if we can get a Zozo for 50 bucks of Icarus, you know, uh, that's an opportunity. In a sense, it's kind of a measure, as I was mentioning in the ah heck uh, space, it's kind of a measure of the conviction in this scene where you're not like, oh, darn, my stuff didn't go up or people aren't buying. It's sort of like, oh, I, it's sort of like an investment to use a financial metaphor where you so like that investment that you're happy when it goes down so you can buy more. It gives you more time, right? So, uh, yeah, uh, so exciting. I am the first one. Great to hear from you. I wonder what language. That kind of looks like Korean here. Uh, not exactly sure. Uh, is that Chinese or Korean? Anyways, wonderful to have you on our international art program here. One of a kind international digital art program. Cal Flemmer. Absurd, de absurd deity is everywhere, indeed, uh, tearing up uh, the blockchain, the Tezos blockchain. Definitely a collector I watch closely. I've found tons of outstanding artists by digging through their collection and seeing what they share on Twitter. Indeed, and I think we have a comment on Twitter from Absurd Deity actually today, which is awesome. Uh, so thank you for the comment, Kyle, and we have a couple of works actually, on-chain works by Kyle. This episode, Omizu Paints. Thank you, Mr. Pokebelly, for these wonderful digital journaling pieces. Uh, I recently discovered your channel. I love it how people can find this channel kind of randomly or however they discover it. I love it. And now it is something I look forward to viewing when I turn on YouTube. I'm not at all familiar with the digital art scene, so when I get a chance to watch, listen to your journals, my understanding of and appreciation for digital work grows. We're kind of back to this language issue, this visual language. Uh, maybe, you know, I've never thought of it this way, but perhaps part of the mission of this show is kind of teaching, helping understand, let's put it that way, helping to understand this language, right? So a uh, thrilling uh, post here, comment from Omizu Paints. Uh, awesome to hear from you. Big welcome. And uh, just love getting comments like that. Thank you. Local doodler Adrian Salawaki here. Great show as always. Thank you very much for showing two of my recent works today. Yeah, Salawaki is uh, on fire, uh, is how I'd describe it. Of course, we started the show with Salawaki a couple of days ago. That brilliant work, again, and just like this series of brilliant decisions, uh, was great. Again, that went for 400 Tezos at the end of the auction, as far as I remember. What a great conversation on contemporary art. Been, been enjoying it so far, reading these interesting takes. Thank you for the comment, local doodler, a.k.a. Salawaki. Great to hear from you. Rosecho, thank you, Adrian, and I believe we have a couple of works by Rosecho today, and one of them is actually, I think, a portrait or homage to Salawaki. So, as you see here, great little scene going on. Baziah, thanks, amigo. Appreciate your mention. The future, the future artist also. So, of course, Baziah is having a baby, and we saw the picture last episode, so big shout out to Baziah and fam. Uh, also on Twitter... Uh, thank you for the support. Nice uh, response there. Uh, Jan Lucas Magone, LFG, beautiful artworks. And I believe we have a work by Jan this episode, Human Boy. Wonderful episode as always. I've been a bit less active of late, but so happy to catch up with your videos when I can see what all is going on. Always interesting and exciting and beautiful. So all of this enthusiasm... Uh, makes me enthusiastic, uh, and you, and it just kind of adds to the conviction. Because if one person's saying it, it's like, okay, that's interesting, but who knows, especially if it's yourself. But if all of a sudden 30 people are saying, hey, this is pretty darn interesting what's going on, then like then it starts to go, okay, well, 30, why not 3,000? Uh, so just interesting. Thank you for the comment, human boy. Great to see, Great to hear and see from you. Great to see you and hear from you. Brain dead. thanks for the highlight, Adrian, as ever. And another, I love it, uh, another person who's in the show, and we'll have to find some human boys. Uh, also, Mamadou, uh, GM Poco, dope show as usual. Thank you. Thank you, Mamadou. Great to hear from you and the good vibes. Pedro Jose, time for my coffee and artist journal. That is exactly what this is. This is coffee uh, with your friend here, Adrian. Uh, indeed. Absurd deity. 
Hello, Adrian. Please stop. You are ruining my life. Just kidding, of course. I've never watched Game of Thrones, even though I absolutely know I would love it, simply because I know I would never have time to watch all the episodes. <coughs> Excuse me. And yet, and I totally relate to that. As I said in my response, I, I never watch, I never, I subscribed to Netflix for a couple of months, but I never really got into Breaking Bad, Game of Thrones. Like I, I missed even The Sopranos. And why? Because I didn't, I was worried I'd lose a whole bunch of time. So I completely re relate. And yet, I now find myself immediately queuing up your artist journal as soon as I'm aware you've dropped another episode. Uh, and don't get me started on my new quest to watch your past episodes in reverse chronological order. Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, you know, I'm waiting for some sort of AI solution on this where you can kind of get all the content and get all the summaries somehow. Uh, and then here are the works and maybe you can consume it in five minutes rather than an hour. Uh, seriously, though, I'm hooked. Don't want you to stop, but maybe take more frequent vacations. Indeed. So speaking of which, uh, I will be going... End of November, I haven't figured out the exact date. Excuse me, this is the second time in 360 episodes that I'm drinking water. I had to drink water. It's always here. It's been here, I'd say, 340 episodes. I've had a water here. Uh, anyways, uh, so going on vacation. First of all, thank you for the awesome comment, and I'm thrilled uh, to hear that this is resonating. That this is resonating. Uh, and... I also, I, I am going away, I think, I'm still trying to figure out November 20th, around November 23rd, uh, gonna, I want to do, this is the plan, I want to do some genealogical research, I found out part of my family is from uh, Bologna, and the, the Pocabellis are from Livorno, and this is all Tuscany, so one half of my fa family is quite heavily based out of Tuscany, interestingly. So I kind of want to uh, see if I can find anything out and then go to Rome to visit the relatives and go to Toronto to visit the relatives, then go to Saskatoon to visit the relatives and then go to Seattle. It's kind of ridiculous, actually. Uh, but anyways, that's uh, so it may be sporadic in December, all to say, uh, but uh, as ever. But anyway, sometimes it's good for breaks uh, for everybody. For all, all parties concerned. Anyway, thank you for the comment, Absurdity. Uh, really appreciate it. And also, let's just go here. And also, uh, let's see. Uh, Bleak, thank you so much, Pokebelly Beans. That's your new nickname. So this is Bleak. Awesome to hear from you, Bleak. Appreciate you showing uh, GLTXWV28. Beachgrass Winslow. So I think I showed three, and one was actually a collaboration with Absurd Deity. How awesome is that? And Jeff, definitely check the creative works too. So I didn't even really realize Absurd Deity made works. So you're constantly learning here, uh, as ever. So Rosatio, thanks for featuring my work. That piece sold almost instantly to Absurd Deity. It hadn't even been posted on Twitter yet, and boom, they snagged it, probably through the object notification. And yes, you should mint more. Don't forget to create something after you finish the show. I have been, I'm very happy with the creative uh, juices in the last uh, 48 hours. It's been an excellent weekend of creativity. Uh, I'm excited, very excited. So hopefully that will be remedied sometime soon. And I appreciate you mentioning that, Rosatio. Uh, yes, hopefully, and I want to put out just not like a little bit of work. I want to put out a lot of work. It's kind of how I'm feeling. Tim Smith, thank you for the comment. Walk, awesome to hear from you. Starting bid, one, one euro or one Tezos, a thousand lands. Amphora, you know, a interesting, is that a reference to Greek mythology? Not sure. A thousand lands, thank you for the comment. Universe reality alternative, Halloween is soon. Interesting comment. And Wojak, that's what she said. Indeed. So let us continue here. Thank you, everybody, for the comments. Also, a quick look at the community. Here's Louis JPD. Well, most of my work is good vibe and upbeat. Once in a while, a more somber piece of social commentary slips out. This one is called Creativity Circuit 2024, open to interpretation. Let us see what's going on here. So it looks like a repetition, looks like maybe some blender or 3D artwork and axes hitting a gem, interestingly. So kind of ambiguous, kind of 3D here. Interesting piece, thanks for posting, Louis. Uh, mind eye, uh, interesting piece. Don't forget your dreams. Interesting work there. Thank you. Zizo, 
Uh, thank you for posting. And yeah, just once a week, if you can, Zizo. I guess we're in a new week. The new digital of art, this is available on object.com. Kind of, I'm not sure if this is a painting or AI. Very interesting work. And here, actually, I brought this up later in the show too. Where's H.O. after Salawaki's his biggest catch? This is awesome. I love this. Uh, this kind of pastiche, homage, whatever you want to call it. Let's call it a homage uh, to Salawaki's work here. Quite brilliant, isn't it? Rural Idol. Uh, commissioned animation for Art Commission on Object, seven-day uh, auction exploring parasocialism. So always kind of conceptual here with a couple of mountains here. Uh, kind of classic uh, work by Rural Idol. And this is with Art Commissions, uh, which is interesting. So thank you for posting. Uh, Higuch Kisuki. Uh, Higuch Keisuke, thank you for posting film. I tell you, photography uh, is so underdone on the blockchain. That it's, I feel like it has to have a moment at some point. Blake, hey, Belly Beans, new drop. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Blake. Looks rad. Another rad kind of uh, analog video glitch landscape, if I had to venture a guess. And 369, GM, have a nice weekend. Some cool pixelation. So lots being posted here. Filippo Francucci, The Encounter. So cool, kind of surreal painting. We're going to see actually a work in progress by Filippo shortly. Gavin Shapiro will be minting some of my hand-drawn animations on objects, starting with this one. It's an edition of seven. I'm reserving two editions, but you can place offers through the weekend. So here it is. And uh, very cool animations here from Gavin Shapiro. And this kind of red dot kind of jumping between uh, almost like branches here or planes. Interesting. Thank you for posting. Ernesto Ash, The Inner Complications of the Animal Self. I wonder if we have a work. We may have a work by Ernesto in this episode. Thank you for posting. And Rural Idol, again, a first trip to the osteopaths, pass through the process. So we looked at this last episode. Thank you, everybody, for collecting. Uh, sorry, for posting. Unknown Collector. Depending on who you follow here, this scene can feel... Who is going to be on our space, by the way, on Wednesday, as you just saw. Depending on who you follow here, this scene can feel on the one hand like a reality TV show with collectors buying digital art for clout and attention, or on the other hand like a revolutionary new art movement with so much interesting and groundbreaking stuff happening. And that is the big, you know, it's something I've been kind of commenting on, I, like, you know, it feels like a digital art revolution. Uh, I've been commenting on this almost since the beginning of the show. Uh, and interestingly, it's like the conviction is only deepening, where at a certain point, there's so much, there is a credibility as well. Like, let's say the, the aesthetics were dismissed, let's say, by, you know, the art historians for whatever reason. Maybe they don't like the language that we're uh, dealing with or whatever reason. But there is a credibility, I would argue, that comes with quantity. There is so much art in what I would call this kind of second generation of digital art that it, at a certain point, it's kind of like, well, if the culture is effusing this all out in such great quantities with collecting at a certain point, simply, if you're an art historian, you simply have to go, well, this was just part of history and this is clearly art. So this must be art history. And there does seem to be connections with the tradition. Although interestingly, as I was watching a 25 minute video on the history of art, I mean, revolutionarily visually different. We have different variables that are at work here. We were at the beginning of this second generation, I'd argue of a whole other kind of phase in the visual arts, dare I say it. And you know, like I'm kind of zeroing in on this idea of the second generation of digital art, like what that means. And what it means to me is kind of, you know, the early, as we're learning with Dr. Bill in the space, early digital art, there was no user interface where you could, you know, draw, there was no mouse. You had to plot, you had to code, you had to say, okay, computer, do this, and then, you know, write your lines of code and program it, and then the computer does its thing. With probably, I'd say probably the Mac, you know, with the, uh, the OS, the operating system, or Mac OS, or whatever it was called, with the invention of the mouse, uh, where all of a sudden you could tactically draw you know, where you could, where your movement was reflected by the cursor on the screen. 
and it was no longer about coding, that's a break. That is a break in process, in the process. It is a shift. And all of a sudden, as I was calling the episode two episodes ago, all of a sudden you're virtually painting. You're kind of doing a similar or analogous movement to what you would do with physical, but you're doing it with digital tools. And all of a sudden the movement of your hand is being recorded again versus coding. This is kind of what to me makes the break. That is the difference, let, let's say, between the first, what I you know call the first and the second generation. One is where all of a sudden the user interface becomes sophisticated enough where all of a sudden you can paint with a computer. Whereas arguably in the first generation, are you painting or are you kind of coding and making art? Right? So, yeah. So I think this is, you know, part, I think this is helpful in understanding at least uh, what's going on. And again, it took me a very long time to kind of realize these very simple things. So I think, and feel free to disagree. Uh, let's continue here. Uh, strange thing. Appreciate the follow and repost from Ai Weiwei on my piece inspired by his work. Thanks, Ai Weiwei. So very cool. I didn't, I didn't realize. I saw this, uh, which is a strange thing, crushing crypto punk uh, and uh, inspired by, I guess, Ai Weiwei maybe breaking the vase, those old vases, the Ming vases. So uh, very cool. Ai Weiwei is... Uh, so, you know, I have to, I'm not the hugest Ai Weiwei fan. I don't mind Ai Weiwei, whatever. Kind of neutral. And I love how actually he's doing pixel art. And that's actually what I was going to say. He has to be given credit in the sense that I would argue from my own kind of subjective perspective, like, oh, he's hip to pixel art. He's kind of jumping on the pixel art thing. To his credit, we saw the screen prints, remember, of the pixel art. And he's also... He's not just doing it digitally, like he's also screen printing it, which I'd argue is very sophisticated. Uh, so, and again, he comes out of the trad art world, so he wants to sell works and maybe, I don't know if Ai Weiwei has sold many works on the blockchain. So, uh, interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh, also from Strange Thing, uh, GM Art Family, this was interesting. So Strange Thing, a uh, very prominent AI artist. Uh, two years ago, a conversation with Pokebelly Strange thing, basically, we're talking about how, like, it's almost like the language of AI, I kind of got understood, it was helped, just as Haiti Rockets collection helped me understand the language of this kind of second generation of digital art, and just one way of kind of thinking about it, and what was going on on Tezos and everything, and just in general. Uh, strange things, AI work really, you'll see in those early episodes really brought me across from like, is this pressing a button to being like, oh, this is an actual genre that deserves respect and is actually pretty cutting edge. Uh, so let's uh, go back here. So two years ago, a conversation with Pokebelly made me ponder on the essence of art. And now I'm expanding my exploration, in, exploration in a direction that goes back to the basics of form beyond the extravagance of the Renaissance. In liminal objects, I explore a minimalism that's new for me while still embracing the pixelation that has become part of my language as an artist, the start of this explorative series steps away from the Renaissance and time-bending brands while still challenging perceptions of memory through the lens of modern technology and the mundane. As I evolve as an artist, it's nods to Adrian's words, quote, the decisions we make can be art in itself, and quote, drawing inspiration from both the data movement and Duchamp. In essence, the work extends extends the data ethos into the digital age where the boundaries between the physical and digital and the conceptual are more blurred than ever, leaving interpretation in the hands of the viewer. Liminal objects invites viewers to question, reflect, and interpret. So here it is, uh, these new works here. I wonder, these pixels, you know what I wonder to myself is, are these pixels AI? Because uh, AI is, anybody who's tried to make pixel art with AI, I only did it like six months ago at the most recent. Right, So for all we know, AI's come so far now that now the, the squares are perfect now, and perhaps before they weren't, right? Because uh, before they weren't. And here's that episode, Artist Journal number 31, An Art of the Present. Wow. Uh, so it's very fun to have this record here online. Uh, continuing on, Abysms. The amount of OG crypto artists from 2019 and 2020 that is homeless, that are homeless, is really shocking to me. And I don't understand how come no one f 
from the really, really rich blue chip artist does something about it. So I, I guess, yeah, I don't think it's incumbent. I think it's always nice if people who have done really well in the arts do try and help other people. But I mean, it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of back to the, why doesn't the richest person in the world feed everybody? Well, you know, so I think this is a debatable thing. I think, put it this way, it's always nice when it happens, when people bring people up. Uh, you know, you, you see X-Copy do it with Uxine, uh, with uh, Spiegel's was trying to really go in, hey, Spiegel's Meskinen, you know, and maybe there was another. Uh, now, yeah. And again, I, I think, uh, yeah, well, I don't know if I have too much to say about this, actually, but it, it is interesting. Uh, maybe what it says is, because I think this was a problematic narrative for me early on, was this idea that art on the blockchain, and we kind of see it in the Tashin book, I would argue, is this idea is, it's important because it was early, Right? It was important. This art matters because it's early. And sometimes that conf that works and other times it doesn't, I would argue. And so I don't know, like maybe we shouldn't be like nobody should be homeless. I mean, really, it's an utter privilege. Uh, like I put out 360 episodes here, put out a ton of art dedicated. Like I don't make any, like I make some money on art when I sell it you know, on Tezos, basically. Um, so really, most people have to have another job. And, you know, I think even Die With The Most Likes has another job, you know, so, and he's doing spectacularly. So uh, at least last I checked with him when I was on the podcast that he hosted. So uh, anyway, so just kind of an interesting uh, comment there. Uh, Crypto Forager or Saul Artists, where are you happiest minting your art? So a poll here. I will collect as long as I can afford it, and I like the art, but just want to know where you prefer minting your art, and if you want to comment why, that would be dope. Look at it, one. I'm telling you. Like, I've seen this the last two or three episodes here. Uh, Tezos, there's kind of a stickiness that's going on here with Tezos. Like, as it continues to not screw up and to focus on the art through, and I mean, what is, in a sense, you could say, what is Tezos? Tezos and object are kind of becoming, you know, without object, what is Tezos? Then it's like, I guess you'd have, of course, there's Tea and whatnot. There's also Tea, right? But, you know, without the art, what is Tezos? And who's using Tezos, right? And so... All to say, look at this. Like it, so as it continues to not screw up badly, one could argue. Uh, particularly, object is doing, I'd argue, quite well. Uh, it continues to build credibility. Like you could or argue, like where's Zora here? You know, four months ago, you'd probably have to put Zora in this list, right? Uh, so interestingly, uh, ETH thirty-eight percent shape. So this is the new one. Uh, five and a half percent base, seven point four percent. So this is where people like to mint uh, Tezos, even over Ethereum. Very interesting poll. I I voted for Tez too. I think it's the vibrancy of the market. It is actually a function of the market, and we're almost back to the free market argument that I've been making, which is how important it is and what it's doing. It's kind of like the magic of the free market is working, and you know is what it seems uh, to be happening here uh, on, and as I kind of say, it's almost like what we're having here is an immune reaction, I'd argue, from what's happened in the contemporary art world, which is, I would argue, not so much a free market, even to the point where if you want work by a famous artist, like not just anybody can buy that work, uh, you know, like they'll be like, who are, oh, you know, where's this going? And no, like, you know, you'll often hear, I knew a art consultant who had done pretty big deals, been refused. I don't know if it was like Albert Olin work or whatever, because he wasn't important enough. So that's just an example of how the contemporary art world and who gets in the gatekeepers. We have a free market here, and I think it's working like an immune reaction. Uh, and it was almost inevitable. We just finally had the internet and finally with crypto, a credible way of buying and selling. And then it just kind of flourished on its own. It was going to happen sooner or later. Let's continue. Sabato, I don't know where what the deal is with Shape L2. So you tell me. Freemint on Shape. 
And I guess there's a lot of gamification, so a bit of a social commentary from Sabato. It looks like using a glitch technique here, and gamification is technology of social control. Uh, and here, all I know about Shape is that you can get medals for giving away biometric data <laughs> and control of your Twitter account. Yeah, also I filled out a form to be an artist on Shape and they never responded, which gives me the ick. Free mint until November 1st. Yeah, it's kind of screams uh, crypto in a bad way. I, you know, just from my reflections over here, uh, feel free to disagree and mention why I'm wrong uh, if you feel otherwise out here. I. Uh, yeah, like I didn't. Even, yeah, who knows? Uh, let's continue. Uh, Warpcast. This was interesting. Retro Manny. Web three is small. Warpcast is even smaller. It's a decent app now that most of the grifters now that most of the grifters are gone. But they took seventy five percent of the users with them. I still use it, but its future looks pretty shaky. Even if Dgen, the tipping coin, is listed on Coinbase. Organic traffic. So six point one thousand visits in October is what it looks like, uh, interestingly. So that doesn't seem very high, does it? Uh, down from 20,000 in June. Uh, so, yeah, interesting. Uh, John Cates, a few, again, it's kind of surviving. Like, another thing that Object is doing as kind of the front app, you know, the, fr the user interface of Tezos, you could, uh, I could almost argue that that's what it is, is, again, by by sticking around and not screwing it up, they're surviving and then their credibility builds and builds and builds, I would argue, is what's going on here. John Cates, a few physical glitch art exhibitions simultane simultaneously showing my glitch Western artworks today, Kansas City, Zagreb, and Pittsburgh. So congratulations to, uh, to John Cates, a Western pioneer of the Western glitch art style, glitch in games, and here you see a glitch cowboy uh, very cool. Uh, that was a fantastic space we did with John Cates about three months ago. Dan Control. Uh, so doing a cover for a book here. How cool is that? Uh, inside you'll find stories. So they're short stories. So Dan getting his artwork out there everywhere. Uh, so just very cool uh, to see that. And here's Filippo Francocci. Happy Sunday, friends. So here is Filippo at work in the studio. And you see part of the process here as we kind of speed through this. But you, I want to show the start too, as you see, just putting down some splotches. And then actually there's some plastic, I think, brought in. Just, so very interesting, isn't it? And then kind of tightening up the detail. Very reminiscent of the decalcomania technique used by Max Ernst, which is what? Very similar. Put some paint down, put paper, peel it up, and then seeing what you see, and then starting to kind of, again, it's like Leonardo's, you know, as for practice, look at the clouds and see what you basically hallucinate in the clouds as to kind of, you know, exercise your imagination. Kind of a similar technique at work here. Put down some random mark making and then lift it, and then what do you see? Very, very interesting work uh, by Filippo Francucci. Arnaud Pfeffer, finally, gradient plotting, one drop of ink equals four meters of plot before fading away completely. You know, you know, it goes through my mind. Maybe you can already guess. It's like, what if, what if you got good enough at this where all of a sudden you could do like Nov 1914 physical? Uh, would that like bring the house down? It's like that would be like unbelievable. Uh, very interesting. Arnaud Pfeffer. Gradient plotting. <laughs> <laughs> Looks dangerous. Death and Rebirth. This is Zozo uh, with another brilliant work. Let's actually, let me get the volume. Beautiful music as ever. Zozo out of Argentina. Death and Rebirth. Kind of looks like a tree. Wild ending there, too. We have another one by Zozo. Let's just see what happened here. Zozo is selling out, like, after, like, immediately. At 15 Tezos, so Zozo, you know, I remember it wasn't that long ago that Zozo, you know, would sit on their works. Now, edition of 10 at 15 Tezos. It's 150 Tezos. And put 
No, in another work, was that the same day? No, two days later, Reflections Under the Rainbow Reflection. This is also an edition of 10, selling out at 15 Tezos. Uh, yeah, very interesting. And how long did it take? It was like this one, within an hour. Okay. So Zuozo is hot. You can see why. Zuozo, Zuozo is on fire. So original. You don't know what's going to happen. It's kind of nice conflation. Again, it's back to nature and digital and these kind of rectilinear and curvilinear contrast. Reflections under the rainbow reflection. Uh, just And just what's beautiful about Zozo is the sentiment. Like there is like, Zozo really kind of is very good, I would argue, at capturing a feeling. And of even, yeah, like of a feeling that almost makes you feel like you're at summer camp when you're 14 or 15 and uh, you're somewhere and it's just like one of the, you know, just one of these moments in your life that just stick with you. Uh, that was beautiful, right? That's what I think of Zozo, uh, Zozo's work. Uh, really powerful. Yuri J. Oct so Octopus, maybe number 48, edition of one. This is from the second Yuri J. account with it, four extra J's there. Interesting work here. Kind of, a, I'd argue, perhaps the more experimental account and a really big octopus here, so Yuri J can do no wrong. Uh, looking at the eyes here, and that went for 420 Tezos, and that was Sunday Fun Day, and there was random GL, there's Absurd Deity, several people willing, willing to spend like 250, 270, uh, and here's Yuri J just on the timeline there on X. Let me fix the mic here. Uh, so just, I guess, a work in progress, but you see all the beauty here. Again, just scratching the surface here in digital art, in this, you know, in this different kind of digital art, you know, where, again, this virtual painting, right? Uh, very cool uh, from Yuri J. Let's continue. Uh, Ed Marola, Dream of Chill. This was a pretty cool piece here. Edition of 25, as we see here, this person maybe sucking their thumb with the purple classic purple and that beautiful bedspread there or duvet and the computer with a little creature there and here you see this awesome background that's moving uh, that functions as the background here with the samples and the textures and then this beautiful real painting digital painting again another computer hooked up maybe plugged in somewhere and on a bed in the middle of nature pretty rad I believe kind of 16 by 9 uh uh, ratio, interestingly. Uh, Dream of Chill, cool title, edition of 25 for 10 Tezos and 11 left. So more than half sold, bringing 130 Tezos. Real money. And here's another one. Edition of one, this is 250 Tezos by Ed and a very cool kind of more smaller work, you might say. Look at this awesome frame here and this sampled brushes and then a couple of eyes on it and this beautifully uh beautiful gradient here with the dithering coming in and out like just spectacular uh really extended gradient and then beautiful textures here at the bottom uh super original colorful edition of one 250 and here's another one say hello by ed a wild kind of cropping of this creature here so you see the experimentation uh, and this, see this brush mark here, kind of looks like a little sample of this just dragged out, right? So playing with a whole bunch of different kinds of techniques, almost like a Rousseau kind of environment, a couple of creatures out in the jungle, uh, edition of five for 50 Tezos each, two selling. So I tell you, this market is doing fabulous. Dream of Bird, edition of 10 for 25 Tezos, three selling, or two selling, three. Uh, this is an exciting, exciting market, isn't it? And so it's sort of like if you're watching this and you haven't put any digital art up, like I hope you're getting excited because you might be able to sell it is how this is going right now. You kind of want to strike while the iron is hot. I think of Rosatio's words. Uh, make sure you don't forget to make your art. And that's a message to me as well as everybody else. Now of 1914, uh, more fabulousness here. Now this is after Botero. 
who I do realize, I do know, which I saw in uh, the Museum of Con- Latin, of Con- the Contemporary Museum of Latin American Art in uh, Buenos Aires. Uh, Mujer Sentada. So another homage, this one to Botero. This is rad. Uh, beautiful, beautiful work by Nov 1914, edition of 10, selling out within like, uh, in no time, basically, uh, at 1450. So these artists are doing fabulously here, bringing in real money. Uh, Mishi Asu, a flower vase, putting out a lot of work, uh, just chose kind of one, almost at random here, just kind of a cool, more experimental artwork here. Levin Tezos, Dr. Lee picking that up. Uh, Still life number three. Let me see if I can quickly bring this up. As you see here, putting out, continuing with this edgy uh, aesthetic here, very challenging, as we like to say here. Uh, A lot of one ones, but they're like mostly sold out. You know, it's so, again, awesome. Uh, Let me continue here. Uh, Enigmatris with more uh, gorgeous work here. Uh, So playing again with the visual ASCII here. I don't see any letters on this one. Uh, Really nice piece here. And then going back to the still life modified by ASCII elements. And here we are again, kind of in the spirit of that one we started with the other day, and just very cool, look at the fish. So very nice piece here. Let me see if I can make this bigger. Uh, here we go. And so love the fish and everything. So text, masking, look at these other visual ASCII elements. I assume that's ASCII. Uh, very interesting as well as there. Uh, and look at this, like, I mean, this is interesting, very subtle. You see the visual ASCII is done in green here. You can barely see it. And then it's coloring part of the grapes. It's coloring this melon here with green over top, but you barely see it. So much experimentation in Edding Mattress's work. It's very cool to see. Keeps you guessing. Uh, Metalic. This is by Rat Cloak. Uh, This is an edition of one. Selling for 250 Tezos. So Tezos art is pretty hot right now. Very cool uh, digital painting here by Rat Cloak. And cool kind of brushwork. And what do we have here? Almost like uh, kind of feels a little Picasso-esque over here, doesn't it? Uh, So interesting. Another face on a face. You know, so more mysterious digital painting, I assume, with uh, Photoshop brushes, perhaps. Kind of like a mermaid. That's what we're starting to see here. Kind of has a Picasso feel, this one, doesn't it? Uh, Digital brushes, 3,500 by 3,500, edition of one. All these people bidding... And Kobe, J. Kobe, winning it for 250 Tezos. Exciting times. Uh, self-portrait next to the river. This is by De Taste. And so interesting piece here as this kind of almost like the spirit. Look at how beautifully colored that is with the red. It's coming out of this figure here uh, at a river. Another cool digital painting. Uh, and that is an edition of 10. And eight sold. Amazing. This one, Mythson. So a new myth uh, with Kappa in it seeming to be the figure here. I love how myth goes between uh, popular culture figures like Mike Tyson, then he'll do an artist, then he'll do the myth. I mean, it's very, very interesting how myth chooses the subject of these Mythson series and the, the, the uh, tattoos here. Look at how cool they are as far as how they're all... Uh, uh, illustrate and then the red background, almost the maroon and the yellow clouds. Super interesting. 150 Tezos. Uh, that goes to myth. Mike Sage, also known as Kappa Sage. Here is Bazaya, Dr. Strike, now on object.com, the 10th player of the Sega mis- Minted, listed and sold out with a two minute difference. So the bull feeling is between us. Let's get ready to rumble. Indeed. Uh, thanks for everyone for supporting the series, and we have more. So continues to do very well here. Here are some others uh, that came out uh, on uh, as part of with that classic pink background uh, by Bazaya there. So super productive. Uh, my West Coast team is coming together. This series by Bazaya is fire. Totally awesome. Here's Yann Lucas Magon, Further Away, Shadows of the Soul Collection. So continuing with these very kind of figural works here with the, el- with the skeleton, interesting paint splashes and interesting... Uh, and almost death dancing with the body is almost what this looks like. Almost like this demonic figure here, almost looking like 
they're cutting the throat. Here, uh, being stomped on by the body. Very, very interesting piece here. Isn't it? This digital painting here. And of course, yeah, like the spray and the splashes evoking blood. Interesting palette too, the pink and the orange with black and a white background. Great work, Yann Lucas Magon, edition of 55 for third for uh three three Tezos and 14 left. So sold 40. Uh so again, there are 120 Tezos. I wonder if the market's just expanding here. Uh the animal spirits are definitely in this market. Here's Uxine. Bitripper.dmt. I think this is add shape to your wallet. I think this is shape. Uh, I, there's probably more mints than that. Uh, two mints so far, but that's probably an old, I think that's an old uh, uh, loading of the page. So here, uh, interesting work with the square brush over top, mixing kind of digital and virtual brush elements. And there, uh, kind of a Grim Reaper of sorts with a halo in these kind of crypto art colors with a retro computer, it is classic Uxine, and even this kind of, you know, I almost want to call it, what do they call it? A tondi, tonda, the circular uh, painting. Uh, Uxine, so bitripper.dmt, that's on highlight.xyz. Here is Rosetio, counterfeit mirror after Rene Magritte's The False Mirror. Interesting, very cool. Uh, so here, of course, playing off of Magritte's well, shall we bring up, okay, edition of 10 and two selling so far at 11 Tezos. Interesting, love the painterliness here of these edges. Uh, shall we bring up Magritte Fultz Mirror? It's the one with the big eyeball. Uh, you sometimes see it on the back. Uh, it's kind of like the perfect back cover to a Magritte. And here is this beautiful uh, series of images here. Uh, so, uh, yeah. I'm. I have to. I almost want to take a screenshot of this. Uh, so beautiful. Uh, the Faults Mirror by Magritte. Again, the title, a part of the work, uh, with Magritte. Uh, Rosetio, Salawaki three thousands. After Salawaki three thousands, his biggest catch. So after this work here, uh, Rosetio doing their version. A great homage here. A fantastic homage. Uh, love the banana for the arms. Just beautiful digital collage. Uh, fantastic. And here is Moda MT from The Earth We Come. I think this is, I'm not sure if this is physical or not. Is this physical or digital? I think it might be digital, but it's hard to say because we, I think this is digital, but we saw Moda MT working. Uh, yeah, it looks, I think it's digital because we saw Moda MT working in the studio there doing an oil painting. Uh, so very cool, and there is the work. It kind of has almost a 19th century kind of feel with the pickaxe and this kind of pastoral setting. Trademark butterfly there, too. Here's RJ. The night has a brightness of its own after David Hockney. And here we see more of RJ's uh, what looks like AI and then... Uh, and then also with these kind of retro screen renderings and magic wand is what that looks like. And maybe a bit of a Greek kind of orange and black vase sort of uh, palette there, but hard to say if that is what is intended. And then a little bit of GIF movement. So interesting work, probably see it on object, I assume, or Ethereum at some point. Beautiful work by Lorna Mills here. Uh, the storm, and then you see her trademark uh, masking here with the marquee tool and that beautiful gray, I have to say, uh, compliments this beautifully. And there you see uh, Mon Drapeau. Again, the name's coming from racehorses. Uh, almost all her works, she's actually saying all her works, the name comes from, the names come from racehorses. Uh, Mon Drapeau, which means my flag in French, edition of 30 for 20 Tezos and 11 left. So a very healthy market here on Tezos. Uh, Mumble Boy, now that the secret is out, your task is to master the vision. So Mumble Boy, just on the show, on the spaces that we do on Wednesdays, just kind of learning about these characters, which I think are loosely based on a, or at least inspired, look at these collages, inspired by a Japanese kind of, as far as I understand, TV show. Apparently Little Cakes was mentioned as well. So uh, interesting work here from Mumble Boy, uh, out of Japan, uh, lived in New York for quite a while, uh, very interesting history and space 
an addition of one, 16 Tezos. This was brilliant. Our milk. Uh, guten Morgen. If you're on the road again and you need to overcome nostalgia and a thirst for fresh folders, bon appetit. This is brilliant. I almost was tar- tempted to start the show with this. Of course, we see operating system and operating system elements used to create an image. And we've seen these elements a lot before, but usually they're kept as operating system elements and then just kind of reorganized uh, here. They're used as kind of brushes of a certain kind, or at least collage elements to make something completely different. This is quite sophisticated digital collage in a sense, even though that's not exactly what this is. Uh, But this is a very beautiful, interesting uh, work. And here, even at the end here, how the perspective is kind of broken, right? And it just, it doesn't go diagonally higher. And it just, that's a brilliant, beautiful decision. Even the lighting though is different, but then you have an angle over here. Uh, Really brilliant work by Armilk. And here, this is by Greg Nishumika. And these are made, I believe, in Excel. Uh, So as you see here, and so who knew I mean, they almost look like these uh, Zozo-like gradients here. Maybe that's the secret, is you use Excel with these big, you know, digital kind of clumpiness. Uh, Very cool. And here you see also almost like ASCII at the top. Uh, Very interesting. Night Swimming, great title. Uh, Edition of 15, and that is sold out at a Tezos each. Here's another one. And again, you see the Excel files here. Uh, so sunset edition of 10, this is 33 Tezos sold out on primary, uh, at one Tezos each. So very, very interesting work there. And here's one that looks like it's in progress, sell beach, but for sale office drone art segment and edition of 10. And this one is sold out at, at Tezos as well. So drawing with Excel, uh, again, uh, just scratching the surface here of what is possible. Here is Byte by Bit, a new one created by 1989 Banner Media. So great to see Byte by Bit continuing to put out new work here. And this is from, again, Retro Tools, old software, Banner Mania. And I'm old enough to remember actually when printers had that kind of perforated paper to help it move the paper along. Uh, So very cool. And it's very cool how uh, Byte by Bit shows the software at the beginning and then kind of shows this movie going through it of what's going to be printed. Ace. Uh, Very cool. There, here's Daniel W. Current. And uh, it's good I have a meeting in about 20 minutes here to cut us off. Uh, Current, this is Daniel W. Edition of one for 222 Tezos. And here it is. Let's press play. And again, almost using what looks like occult elements, uh, some sort of shape here. I want to call it a something hedron, decahedron, perhaps. Not sure. And then the eye, kind of almost like an eye in the pyramid, and interesting kind of shapes over here too. Kind of screams the occult a little bit. And there is the signature of Daniel W. at the bottom, out of Brazil. Here's Marietta with some cool drawings here of shoes, uh, kind of a perfectionist, self-declared perfectionist. And here we go. You see it here. And uh, so just really uh, cool illustrations of shoes. I assume this will be in for a uh, CGI work, but I guess we'll see. Uh, cool shoes there. Sebasto Sestaro, Seba Sestaro. And some work here on uh, Instagram. And let me just make this larger. Cool work. Again, so Marietta worked for, or did some work for Valentino. Seba Sestero did, all, often does illustrations for the New York Times or uh, has done illustration for the New York Times. Uh, and here you see, uh, just, you can see how friendly this would be for a newspaper or magazine, just classic, beautiful. Kind of these, again, psychological works. Here is Wasteman Goldminovich, the failed artist, number 91, self-portrait playing a guitar in the desert. Sounds like a ship. Six six minutes and 40 seconds. Uh, And here it is, the failed artist. uh, This drone. So the humor continues here. Love that series. Uh, That is an edition of 13, and it was available for only a, a Tezos. And I think it was an open edition for like 12 hours or something. 
These are really cool. Katarina create object T. Object.com. Uh, so here, Katarina create putting some very cool kind of homages to object here. And here's object cap. Uh, using Object 98, their Microsoft Paint works here, and this kind of cool sun, a very limited palette. Uh, I picked up a couple of these, and they actually sold out pretty cool, pretty quickly. I love Object, uh, another work. So three works here by Katarina Create using Object 98, which is their Microsoft Paint 98. Uh, very cool. Uh, work by Katarina Create. Here's Stip and Pixel back, finally. We saw one work last week, but uh, just awesome to see these kind of playground works back. Very cool artist. I think out of Argentina, if I'm not mistaken, a uh, really cool pixel artist. Street Moment number 50. Edition of 50 for five Tezos each and six gone. Here, I think this is new. Uh, this is by uh, Kappen here. And I'm pretty sure this is new. Interesting uh, palette here and doing more works on the Surreal app, uh, pixel art works using all these different elements and just looking cool as ever. That kind of looks like a planet or a sun, not sure. And even there's the Maximize, uh, very cool work there. Here's Slava 3, uh, Premonition Mirage Fragment. So also putting out some new work here, which is cool. Uh, kind of mixing uh, pixel art and or let's say dithering, black and white. Almost like some 3D rendering here. Kind of looks like two or three different softwares. Interestingly, uh, Mirage Fragment. Uh, this is edition of 15 and three left. So artists continue to sell their work. Anis Abdin, this is on uh, Instagram. Another cool work day 279. We're getting close to the end of the year here where Anis Abdin will have made a work every day, but it's not over yet. Actel, edition of one for 33 Tezos. Uh, pixel art work here called, again, 33. Kind of looks like boats in the sea, perhaps, and cool dithering and images there, and that is in Thailand. Floating markets of Thailand. Here's Nicholas Dietrich, more than 60 versions later. Detail of new piece coming tomorrow, so the work is out. Uh, Orb. I saw this form while in a trance during a QHHT session. It's possible I was putting something into it as fuel. It is some form of advanced technology. Interesting. So uh, huge pixel art work here. This orb by Nicholas Dietrich. Again, enigmatic pixel art is how I like to call that. Uh, edition of 20, uh, one selling so far for five Tezos. Some more on-chain art from Kyle Flemmer, who we're hearing from earlier in the show, God's Eye. This is October 5th, and I just love this work. I, I, there's something I really love. I see it with uh, mech.txt right away. There's something I really love about uh, these small uh, these small files. Uh, I think we're going to see it with Mech 2. I find these, because they're super rich, and then you know if you make them huge, they're going to be beautiful too. But uh, I, I really have a, really love small works. So edition of one, selling, 75 Tezos. Nice work. Here's another one, Shadow Play. And this sold for, uh, there's an offer coming in at 75 Tezos, not accepted yet. Amazing. There's a lot of money on this chain right now. Here is Mech. Look at this. Monument Sapiens, fully on-chain, hand-drawn pixel art, 306 by 261 canvas size. Uh, four bytes, two-bit. So tiny, you know, size here, four bytes. So here is the work. Uh, so there's something about this on-chain art uh, and these tiny files that I just can't get enough of. You know, I do it myself. I love it. Uh, it's a really weird phenomenon for me because I had to start making it out of necessity to keep it small. And then I was like, I kind of love it. At first I thought it was weird. But again, as I learned that language of the small, all of a sudden it's like, oh, this kind of has its own weird kind of preciousness. Here's Armilk again, who did that amazing truck using uh, operating system elements. And here it's a, it's a portrait of a clown vamp is what it looks like. That is, this is Clown Vamp's uh, 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 profile picture. So here, illustrated and pixelated, uh, nice uh, work, again, by our milk. Kuda, Kuda out of memory, so kind of a ancient Egypt meets one-bit pixel art. A hieroglyphs, but then a little bit of kind of technology here. How'd this do, 2,800? This on object, glyptogram, awesome. 
Here's one by Braun Pulse. Not sure if this is new or not. Again, you see these static pixels on top and then kind of masked out and then pixels underneath moving from right to left. Uh, cool work there. Here's another abstract. This is Ernesto Ash Crash Blossom, just released here. Another very small work. I wonder if this is also on chain. Uh, not sure. Maybe not. So this is 250 edition of 10. But little works like that, like what if you made tiny abstract works and then you put them on chain? I mean, I would think that would be amazing. Uh, verse, Null Machines number one. So this is Karim Safa and Loacme. So not sure if this is new or not. I think it is. Uh, not sure exactly. So here's where they're, uh, this is on Verseworks. And so here you can see a pixel art machine. Interesting combination of artists there. Here's Brain Dead pixel art version for Inktober. So uh, there it is. And number six, I love the documentation here. It says Trek is the theme. And so here you see a computer moving through the world. Very nice documentation there, Brain Dead. Thanks for the guide. Uh, uh, Francois Gamma, this is a pretty cool moving figure. Always keeping it new here, amazingly. Uh, just a great artist there, this is on Instagram. Continuing, here's Jean Provencher. Interesting uh, rendition of a tennis player in all of the different ways and then showing them juxtaposed. You know, kind of a real window into the infinite possibilities, right, of digital. Uh, this is just another example. And interesting, what I love about this work, what do we see? We see someone serving a tennis ball, but it's moving through the actions, but then giving all these different renderings along the way. Uh, really smart. Kind of a weird, uh, you know, to a certain degree, you could kind of put it in the camp of Etienne Jules Marie, right? Of these kind of sequential, uh, and I always forget the other guy's name. Uh, of the sequential photographs, right? That came out when photography started. Uh, Mariana J.U., uh, Kid, Kid Picks Landscape. Uh, so cool uh, work here by Mariana J.U. Uh, using Kid Picks software, which I think you can get online. Uh, here's, this was interesting, rotating Mario made of 2,500 looping NES videos. Uh, kind of a wild looking work here, as you can see. And there is Mario. You know, and then, so using each little pixel really as a screen, uh, pretty darn interesting, isn't it? Not sure I've ever seen anything quite like this. And they're, yeah, like wild kind of hallucinatory work here. Here's Silva Santu's Glitchscape number 11, 1,069 frames. So this is almost like a movie. Uh, as you see, my cursor is, makes the computer pretty busy here. Uh, but cool, I love the minimalism of this Glitchscape here by uh, Silva Santuz. Here's Glitchtown Arcade, kind of going a little more abstract with the Nintendo Glitch ROMs here. You can hardly tell it's a Glitch ROM, but I suspect it is, 54. And here we have Evelyn O, who of course I follow. Uh, and I think this is another physical, again, using sampled brushes. Very cool work here. And here's Kiro, something a work with a work called Compass. And this was just, this was minted actually a month ago. So uh, there it is, another video painting by Kiro. And here's Ernesto Ash again, P Pixelare, uh, who I believe is, who is an artist on the blockchain. Maybe this is a portrait of sorts. Uh, sweet, honest, dear friend. Uh, so very cool there. And Dr. Version, as I got to speed up a bit here, Pylon Tempo. This is a GIF. And here, edition of seven and very high, pretty high resolution, 1620 by 1080. And this is seven Tezos and just listed here uh, two days ago. So give Dr. Version some support. So cool uh, analog video glitch work done through GIF. Acid Boy with uh, kind of a hallucinatory, of course, uh, image here. And I'm not sure if, I imagine still doing work on Bitcoin. I thought I saw, didn't we see a tweet recently of that? Psycho Futurist running through this uh, tarot here, the Emperor. Uh, so interesting, uh, the series. I'm amazed at the speed with which, here's another one, Justice. Very interesting uh, kind of CGI version that's moving of the tarot. Uh, very cool. Here's Renki, Toyama, and uh, changing the grid to red. Always keeping it new. 
Here's another work by Renke, edition of one. And wait till you see this next one. This was a surprise. I was almost waiting for it to move. Uh, and here, interesting kind of canvas here. It looks like 1920 by 1080, if I had to guess, or 16 by 9, uh, also by Renke, edition of one. Interesting piece. Ex Mortal, Waiting for the Storm. This is analog video glitch and really glitched out waves here. So more nature and video glitch. Uh, cool piece. Composition 340, this is by Klaus. This is an edition of one, sold. Uh, really nice minimal work here. Some nice feedback, selling for 23 Tezos. Composition number 340, I mean, you do the math. Let's say Klaus got 20 Tezos each. I mean, you're talking like 6,800 Tezos. Not bad. I mean, and then what is that? Like $5,000 more? Not bad at all. LB, a uh, gift dump. So just some works here. I love that Burn Me one. Not sure if that's all available on Arzora. So maybe some works we missed by, by LB as of late. So nice way to catch up here on Instagram. And continuing on, here's Kenick Zapata, The Hack of Theory. Kind of, again, kind of uh, not even sure how this is made, but but seeming to show poetry and code in, and, uh, in combination. This is an edition of one. This is 30 Tezos, another interesting piece. Here's Salawaki, Prison Break. So very prolific here, and Salawaki escaping. Salawaki discovers that the only way out of the cube, where she had been living for years with a permanent art show installed inside, is to break through the ceiling. Very cool, and I love the square that's put a little off center. Uh, nicely done from Salawaki. More great GLBs. Edition of 20, uh, selling out at eight Tezos. Nice work. And here's Jean, uh, uh, sorry, Mr. Bizold. Digital painting by Mr. Bizold, uh, 300 DPI. So pretty amazing, actually. I thought these were AI, but I don't think they're AI. I think this, oh, actually this is AI. If I had to guess. This looks like AI and digital painting combined, because I do seem to recognize here some digital distortion. So interesting. Love the piece uh, and the beautiful. I've never seen a ceramic like that, but you should make a ceramic like that. Here's another one by Kenick Zapata, picked up by Kika. Uh, and here, very cool piece. How much does it sell for? 20 Tezos. And again, looks like, I, if I had to guess, more AI. Uh, pretty original work here by Canix Zapata of the sky. And here, another work. This is also by Canix Zapata, selling 20 Tezos, edition of one. Some kind of interesting pixelation here. I assume AI is involved. Kind of looks like that. I was talking about AI pixel art. Kind of feels it's got a little bit of that, A, but I'm not positive on that. Um, uh, a collection of generated landscapes. So I'm not sure. Maybe that's that might be, oh yeah, Runway ML which I think is actually AI. Skamra, this is picked up by Artie Hands for 25 Tezos. And I th what is the name? I think it's Hamburglar, Falling Man Hamburglar. Uh, so interesting, potentially very provocative work. Kind of looks like uh, suicide as a Hamburglar. Is that, or 9-11? I mean, so not sure what's going on there. Uh, edition of one, uh, 30 Tezos. Here's another uh, also by Skamra, beautiful textures here, pretty dark uh, subject matter. Here's another one by Skamra, kind of a more easy subject matter to digest here, beautiful textures and everything, a woman in the forest. And here's another one by Skamra, James, stable diffusion and diffusers textual inversion. And here again, you see just awesome textures uh, put together in a beautiful digital AI painting. By Skamra, here's No Hygiene, edition of One Universe. So continuing to challenge us here uh, with what look like fuzzed out JPEGs. <laughs> but, uh, but, but there's something recognizable here of, as No Hygiene. Maybe it's this figure here, not sure. Universe, edition of One, 25 Tezos. Here's another one with uh, No Hygiene consistently uh, challenging us. Here is Mikey de la Creme. And really need to speed up here. Shook Ones, part two, blue. So beautiful uh, new AI art painting for Kelowna Contemporary. And let's see, I think we have another one by Mikey Wilson, Sunday Service. So getting back in the studio here as this market heats up. Uh, and here, as you see, in another interesting AI painting. AI image inspired by Kenya West's ongoing Sunday services created in Mid Journey. 
And here's Ile, Piano One, and this is part of a series of studies on pianos by Ile, so more AI artwork, and here you can see them, the whole series. I think there are five. Here's another one, piano number two. Uh, so again, you see the power of AI to create, you know, drawing, painting, original ideas, uh, combination. Very powerful. Here's your, uh, Ilya Bliznets, picked up by Yuri J. This is called the Scream AI and Digital Painting, edition of one. And so complex work here. And perhaps this is the person screaming. So a new version of the Scream, but in the studio, perhaps. Uh, that sold for 77 Tezos. And here's AKF Kinga, and the sacred is the opposite of the profane print, one of one, and artist proof. So a couple of cool AI artworks here by Alexandra King Fekete, if I am pronouncing that well. This is called Jet Setters, one of one, and artist proof. And here is Demon Ego, Bad Math. And let's see, in our closing minutes here. So here, kind of wild uh, experimentation here from Demon Ego with AI video. Gotta love it. Uh, October 2024. And also, aw heck, getting back in the scene here. Aw shucks, putting out some AI artwork here with what looks like Disney animation cells uh, as uh, inspiration here or sources. We're going in the right direction. Catawampus, edition of one and selling for 12, or sorry, listed for 12 uh, Tezos. And here is Duolingo by Machine. This was hilarious. Let's review your mistakes. So Machine put a poll out on her, I think it was her Instagram saying, what should I do? And she had to listen. One was a painting on Duolingo. And brilliantly, she came up with something like this. I'm not sure if this is AI. I assume it is as a source here, but uh, maybe it's a collage. I don't know, but that is a pretty hilarious uh, Duolingo as dominatrix. And here's another work by a machine. This is called Molly Gooch. This sold, I think she said, after two minutes. So this scene here, we're kind of back to this, like maybe this, like the market seems to be saying something's going on over here. That sold for like 800 bucks, acrylic spray on paper. Uh, I assume you get the physical. It's not always clear uh, with artists. It's always good to check if you're the uh, collector, but you only have a couple of minutes. So, uh, and interesting how the pupil's gone there. Uh, cool work by Machine. Here's PP Universal with some cool painting. Uh, two physicals here. Here's uh, Mariana Nedjinova, a friend of mine actually in Berlin, with some cool illustration ink on paper, loungers. And here is Bondoso Bandito, Mind Your Step. And here again, the endless experimentation of this artist uh, boggles my mind. Really young guy, uh, really talented and prolific as, as heck. Martin Bruce. Uh, showing the physical of this work. And I feel like we've seen maybe a digital version earlier. Here's It's Not Gallery posting Sean Wadey. Very interesting piece here. Uh, and uh, really kind of provocative in a good way. El Song Wu, uh, also posted by It's Not Gallery. And here, interesting combination of kind of real representation with maybe anime, manga, and the provocative pointing the pistol at the viewer. And David Hales, with gorgeous work here. Interesting use of paper underneath. Uh, wonderful watercolor here by David Hales. Watercolor and in ink. Here's Mark Belden, Lane Avenue, gouache on St. Armand paper. Uh, beautiful work. We've been looking at their work for a couple of years here. Here's Filippo Francocci again. Maybe we saw this work in progress earlier in the show. So at least this is a work that was probably generated out of that progress. And there you see uh, finishing the deal with what looks like a ballpoint pen there. Interestingly, on blue paper. Awesome. And that is your show, my friends, just on time here. Thank you for joining me. And come join us with Unknown Collector. Should be a great discussion on everything that's going down right now. Thank you for joining me. Until next time, take care. Mm -hmm.